You know, the last year invented this new four-letter word, MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses, as we've been bringing these courses to people all over the world for free to take, and millions of learners are taking these courses. At edX, we're looking at a different aspect of it. How can we take the learnings in the large and apply it on our own campuses in a much smaller setting? Let's get started. So this could have been a classroom of 100, 200 years ago. As uh, Professor uh, Ishikura said, education really hasn't changed a whole lot in hundreds of years. In the picture that you see here, this was actually a small classroom, an ad hoc classroom happening in the uh, developing world. It's a, it's a real time picture taken. And this is a classroom at MIT. What's different? The seats are in color. But not much has changed in hundreds of years in the way education is done. You see a professor talking and then see a lot of students watching the professor. So we really haven't done much with the quality of education in a large number of years. We haven't done much about access as well. So here you see uh, uh, what is not a rock concert. This is actually a classroom at the uh, Obafemi Ovalova University in Nigeria. And we've all heard of distance education, but the people way in the back, you know, that is long distance education. <laughs> so we haven't done a whole lot with either quality or access to education. And at edX, at edX, we're trying to bring together online learning to improve both the quality and access to education by bringing in videos and online labs and simulations and so on. And by doing so, uh, when we offered a first course on edX.org, uh, uh, this was uh, last year, this was a hard course, an MIT hard course with differential equations and so on, 155,000 students from 162 countries took that course. So this is a really big number. So in addition to, the incre addition to increasing access to education to students around the world, we're also looking at how we can change the quality of education at the same time. And here, we're using an aspect of the millennial generation. So uh, in the millennial generation, they're much more comfortable watching things online. You know, it's, I find it's far easier to tweet my 14-year-old daughter that you see here than it is to talk to her. And so in this world of tweeting and texting and videos, we are creating a blended model of learning where we can combine online and in person. So in a pilot that edX ran with San Jose State University in California, we taught our first blended class there where students would watch online videos and interactive exercises in their dorm rooms and come into class and interact with the professor. And here we found that the retake rate for the course dropped from 41% to 9%. So why is it that the quality of learning improves? With online technologies, we create what are called learning sequences where we interleave videos with interactive exercises. Now these learning sequences have been known and active learning have been studied and known to improve learning. The second big aspect is self-paced learning, where students can watch videos offline and they can pause the video, they can rewind the video and pace themselves. Heck, they can even mute the professor. When's the last time you could do that in a classroom? The third aspect of online learning is instant feedback. So here you see an example of a learner on, uh, on uh, the edX platform entering chemical equations and the computers and cloud computing directly grades those questions and provides instant feedback. In fact, the green check mark has become a cult symbol at edX. And uh, here's the story of a learner who uh, took my course in the spring of last year and then he took a course from Berkeley in the fall. And here is what he had to say about the green check mark on the discussion forums. Oh God, have I missed you. The learners are telling us that they go to bed at night dreaming of this green check mark. So instant feedback for learning can have a really, really big impact in how students learn. The next thing is, you, have, you, ask them, you know, we asked the question, but what do you do about online labs? We can do that too. So with the gamification techniques, so here's an example of an online lab where students can build things online with Lego-like ease, and the computer grades them on that as well. The last aspect is you may ask, how do people ask questions? How do they solve the answers? And uh, Tom Malone gave you all the answers. It's called collective intelligence. So we have a discussion forum on our platform where learners from all over the world are asking questions. And what is amazing is that in the beginning, I thought as a professor, I have to go and answer every question. But what we found is that the collective intelligence, the peer-to-peer -peer learning was extraordinary. They're answering all their own questions and, and they're learning as they do so. 
So we have a number of these blended classes happening all over the world, ranging from uh, Tsinghua University and so on, uh, not far from here, to National University of Mongolia, to Turkey, to uh, uh, the Hawaii Pacific University. So this is really catching on, and we hope that uh, this becomes very exciting. But there are many challenges still. You know, as we move from textbooks to things like tablets and so on, from classrooms to small spaces, from uh, dormitories to uh, digital dormitories and so on. How do we build all these infrastructures? And really that's one of our big challenges as we have governments and policymakers begin to think about how to move us from a culture, a bricks and mortar culture, to a bits and bytes culture. That's our challenge. So my question for you all is how might MOOCs and online learning impact education in the developing world? And there we can think about both top tier universities and the other universities.